I would say the elections of Turkey in May is probably the most important poll globally this year. Either two decades of Erdogan rule in Turkey will come to an end and he'll be voted out, or he'll win, and these will be Turkey's last fair and free elections while Erdogan is on the scene. My name is Soner Çağaptay. I'm the Bayer Family Fellow and Director of Turkish Research Program at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. The May vote is indeed Turkish President Erdogan's biggest challenge to date at the ballot box. This is because Erdogan uh, is a leader who has so far won elections primarily on a platform of uh, delivering growth. Uh, this has helped him build a base. Uh, that's Erdogan's bright side. He also has a darker side as a politician. He has demonized, brutalized, and cracked down on demographics unlikely to vote for him. Well, there's a problem for Erdogan. This is because Turkey's economy has been in trouble now for almost five years. Turkey has hit the point of hyperinflation, almost triple digits, and his base is peeling away. This is the smallest uh, support base he has had in almost two decades. And then there's another challenge for him. His opposition is united. For a very long time, Erdogan was able to win elections. Uh, until recently, these were fair races primarily because the opposition was constituted by disparate section, uh, groups who opposed each other more than they opposed Erdogan. Not the case anymore. In 2018, Erdogan made a grave a mistake, in my uh, view, for his own sake. He switched the country's political system to an executive-style presidential one. That was supposed to make him more powerful, and it did. But a problem for Erdogan with the new system is that, unlike the previous parliamentary democratic system that called for a multi-party race, the presidential system requires for a two-way race. Someone has to get 50% at the ballot box. The opposition has realized that they can defeat Erdogan only if the opposition stays united. He also controls institutions, electoral bodies, many courts that basically take cues from Turkey's president. In the aftermath of the devastating earthquakes, the government in Turkey and its aid agencies were unfortunately uh, slow coming and provided only lackluster relief efforts. Erdogan has shifted the debate in the country successfully from that to reconstruction. That's because he controls 90% of the media. That's to his advantage. But then you also have to figure in that Turkey's democracy is old and resilient. Turkey's citizens have been voting in free and fair elections since 1950, longer than the citizens of Spain have. Uh, th that means four generations of voters. The citizens not only love to vote, turnout in Turkey always nears 90%, but there's a very uh, old tradition of observing the vote. People after they vote will show up at ballot stations, will observe the count. So it's impossible for the vote to be rigged, at least not on a massive scale. So I think while Erdogan has institutional advantage, uh, I would not rule out the possibility of Turkey's democratic resilience making a comeback. So how does Turkey look in case of an opposition win? The opposition is constituted by a six-party bloc known as Table of Six. It includes many disparate groups, including seculars, conservatives, center-right, center-left, and Turkish nationalists. The government will embrace a policy that aligns more closely with the United States regarding the Ukraine war. Uh, the government will release uh, jailed politicians, lift restrictions on freedoms of assembly, media, and association. I, I can also see markets rallying. Uh, the opposition coalition has already said that it wants to find a way to uh, get rid of the S-400 issue in the U.S.-Turkish relationship. Some other problems would remain, to be realistic, including U.S. ties with Kurdish People's Protection Forces in Syria, which is uh, objected to, including by the opposition parties. But overall, I think that an opposition-led government would be more transatlanticist. An Erdogan-led government uh, would continue to be coldly transactional as it has been uh, for a good part of the last decade. But that doesn't mean that the opposition is completely undo Turkey's economic ties with Russia. Russia is among Turkey's key trading partners. It provides Turkey with half of its natural gas. Russian tourists among, are among number one arrivals to Turkey. And so while the opposition would signal that it is willing to come on board with US-led sanctions targeting Russia, it would not completely stop trading with Russia overnight. One piece of good news, regardless of who wins the elections in Turkey, is that uh, Unless the Swedes mess it up, uh, Sweden will probably get a green light from Turkey's parliament to join NATO. Turkey's economy is completely integrated with that of Europe and the West. And so I think the opposition knows that if it wins the elections, it will need to have a reset and the spring in ties with the EU and the United States. So that means not only there is going to be a return back to democracy and rule of law, and of course a call for deeper ties with the European Union, but the opposition will trigger this trends by greenlighting Sweden's 
NATO accession. This is also going to be the case if Erdogan wins. Erdogan knows that, notwithstanding his efforts to change Turkey's identity, once again, Turkey is completely integrated with Europe economically, and for growth to return, Turkey needs to deepen trade uh, with Europe, bring more investment. EU is still the source of 80% of foreign direct investment coming to Turkey. Uh, Erdogan also knows that, as a resource-poor country, Turkey needs financial inflows to grow. So he's going to go for a reset in ties with Europe and the United States. That means uh, greenlighting Sweden's NATO accession. I think that the most important policy recommendation for outside observers is to trust Turkey's democracy. Uh, the Turks, Turkey's citizens rather, know how to vote, how to defend the vote. I think that Turkey has uh, quite a, a deep uh, civil society organizations and a very large middle class. And uh, these groups will do a very active job of monitoring the vote. So I would say have uh, faith in the Turkish vote and in the Turkish democracy.